Friday, June 1st, and I wanted to review one of the trades I did today. This whole past week, this whole week actually I was traveling, so I made no trades. Um, kept you updated on Instagram. But Friday, I, I was back in the office and had some time and saw this trade set up for me. And it set up kind of nicely. And uh, Let's go over that real quick. So, you can see here that there's abnormal volume, which I'm very interested in. And it's a breakout, though, right above this what, 730s, which I would have loved to have played the other day if um, I was you know, able to. This was a beautiful chart. Let's, look, let's go back here, by the way. You'll see here on pre-market, 720s. Then at the open, it dips down in the 630s, spikes up to 720s, dips back down, and then breaks out and just goes. I mean, it goes all the way up to 930 So $2 a share spike, which is awesome, right? And then if you miss that, it reset up. It built a new support level right around here. And then re-spiked and broke out again. Beautiful chart. Missed it completely. I was traveling. But hopefully some of you guys caught it. But that's okay. If you didn't, like I, I missed it. And I missed it completely. And today, it gapped up huge. It closed yesterday at $9.99. So $10. And opened today at 10.65. So it opened up 65 cents a share above the previous close. And let's zoom in today. So pre-market, it was up to 11. And at the open, let's go, this is all pre-market, which I normally do not trade because low volume and it's just, it's choppy. Look how choppy it is. It's like, it doesn't know what it wants to do, right? At least right here when volume comes in, it's a movement, right? It moves straight down and then moves up, right? It's This is just a channel, and I don't like that. I don't like trading in that, and from my experience, trading pre-market, more times than not, I take unnecessary losses. So, when this stock opened up, I wasn't interested in it at first, because, let's go into the very beginning. When it opened up, it was already gapping up. Remember, it closed at $10 right here. So it was already gapping up and it spiked. And I was like, oh, well, oh, well, I missed it. I'll wait for it to reset up later. And I, there was nothing else on my radar because everything else was just not doing anything for me for what I like to trade. And so when this stock started to panic and come back down, I saw it right here when it was testing $10. And I was thinking to myself, you know what? Let's see what happens. I still didn't see a trade. I had no, I had no reason to short it. I had, you know, yeah, it did panic, which is interesting, but it's still green on the day. And then when it had this uh, drop under ten, it was red. I still was not interested. And until it dropped all the way down here to nine dollars, I was interested because now we have a drop from eleven to nine. So it would have been a good dip buy because you can see here support is nine. Previous resistance is nine. So beautiful chart. I mean, look at here. It's bouncing now pre-market at nine again. So this chart is just a great chart to explain support and resistance. For those of you who do not know, support is a level that has held multiple times. Like you see here, it held here, held here, held here, held here, held here. So 830s. And resistance is a level it could not break. It could not break this eight and eighty to nine dollar area. And usually, when it breaks the resistance, not usually, but a good setup would normally hold resistance becomes support. So a way I like to think of it, it can't break through the roof. Once it breaks through the roof, this new, this old roof is now the floor. So right, so it broke through nine, spiked up to eleven. So now eleven's the roof came all the way back down to the floor of 9, and now it's bouncing back up to the roof of 11. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So might have been a good dip buy here, but I still did not want to dip buy it because this support isn't super ideal. I would rather it come down to this level because you see there's tons of support right here. I hope that makes sense. Now, when I saw a bounce though, and I saw it right here at 9.75, I was interested in a potential short. And the reason because is because it's bouncing now 75 cents a share in a matter of like 15 minutes. So I'm hoping that 
Okay, let's see if we can get close to 10. If it can get close to 10, I was going to start in short, risk off $10, and I have a perfect risk reward, right? Because if I get in close to 10, then in this case, I got in right here at 980. Almost top ticked it. I'm risking 20 cents to make 80 cents. That's a great risk reward. I'll take that night and day. And the only reason I was comfortable in this is because of the size that I took. You know, I was thinking about going full size, but I didn't want to because I remembered it just it did just bounce off of this support level of nine. So there's still a good chance it could still go green on the day because shorts keep getting squeezed. I mean, look at these spikes, it keeps spiking. So I played it safe, took half size, and I'm glad I did because it made me comfortable, right? I, if I was uncomfortable, I probably would have taken it all off like right here because I've just been nervous. Um, but I didn't get nervous. I took some profits in the 97, uh, I'm sorry, 962 and then 952 and then right here bottom ticked it or pretty much 940. And then I took my profits and then it spiked back up, broke 10. So if I would have still been holding it, I would have got out if it broke 10, but I probably would have got out really if it broke this area right here in 980s because it would have held this area from the time of 950 all the way till 11. I mean, that's like two hours or really an hour. So I would think the trend is reversing, especially if it keeps moving up. And that's what it did. It reversed. Um, sorry. It reversed and went back up and it went all the way up to 10 to 80. So... Now it's in a channel between $9 and $11. So in this middle zone, I don't like trading it. I like trading it near support or near resistance. That's the key for me. And look, $10 is resistance, right? Because it's red. It's where the stock goes from green to red. But also, look at this. It's under $10. Under $10, it's going to break 10 So there's tons of people um, who are nervous, especially all these people in the morning who all bought right here. Look at all this volume right here. All the way until until this this red candle. Look at this volume. This volume just over overwhelms all this other volume, right? So all of these people are stressed. They're underwater. I mean, they bought in the eleven dollar range or even ten nineties, ten fifties. So every time this thing bounces, they're gonna want to sell into that bounce. Now that is the trade I took, and that and those are the reasons why. Mainly because, big picture, it's up a ton. So when this stock does go red, which it ended up closing red today, um, but it's a little tricky because it held nine, that it can panic. And we did get a panic. I mean, the panic was $3 a share. And I caught uh, a baby panic, right? But it's still a good profit. And, and that's the key. You got to stick to your plan. And the only way you can stick to your plan is if you're comfortable. So I took the proper size for this setup, not being perfect, but still a good setup. And therefore, I made sure that I made, made, took a size that would make me comfortable in this type of setup. So now I'll be watching this for Monday. And let's see. I mean, we got support everywhere now. So it's, it's not a great play right now. I would wait and see what it does Monday and see if it creates a setup. And I would like for this to hold red all day. And if that if it does, and it starts breaking a key level, like maybe this $9, or maybe this eight, and then I probably short it because we still got a huge drawdown, so six or even five bucks. So there's still potential here. So I'm gonna be watching it. Now the other stocks that I'm interested in right now, or at least keeping on radar, is CLDX. And this one surprised the hell out of me today. And the reason it surprised me is because it actually opened right here at three, what, 340s, spiked all the way up to $6. Okay, this is crazy. And there's resistance here at 470, right here. Remember, resistance is where the ceiling, where the ceiling hit the ceiling and then crashed, right? And so this stock today, Spike from three all the way up to five, six bucks. Let's just say six bucks. So it's doubled. And I was actually interested in shorting this um, right around here, 470, not 480, which is the resistance level. Let's go back. 
right here. You see, this is 480. And I'm thankful that I did not short it. And there was no shares to short it also. But, I mean, this is a very low flow. I think it's under a million shares. It's super low. That means people can get short squeezed. Short squeeze is when people are shorting it and they don't cut their loss and then all of a sudden they're panicking out because whenever you get out of short, you have to buy. They panic out and it squeezes all the way to $6. So that's what happened here. And then, of course, it did come back down. But this would have been very scary. And if I would have been shorting this stock... First off, if I would have been shorting right here, 480, I would have cut it. I probably got out at 490. So I'd have lost like 10 cents a share because you got to stick to your plan. So I, it wouldn't have been a bad loss. But I know people out there who will short this and they'll hold. And then they'll cut up here because they're scared because now they're down $2, right? And the bad lesson is if you hold it and then you get back up because it crashes down to 460 and you take profits. Well, then you learn the wrong lesson because it could still go up. In this case, it did go back up. So I'm watching this one. It's on my radar because I'm, there's a good chance that we can get a... I'm hoping it'll get red tomorrow, Monday. And I'll be interested in this for a potential short. I will definitely be interested in this. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's kind of setting up here. Uh, right now, but remember I can't trade Monday, so Monday morning. So I'll be watching this in the afternoon. SLS is another one that I'm interested in. And not too much. I'm just gonna keep this on radar. It gapped up 660 and then shit the bed. A dollar drop. So unless this stock spikes huge tomorrow or Monday. I may short it in this area, but I doubt that will happen. I mean, I, the odds of that happening are, are slim to none. KTOV is another ticker that I'm interested in. And these are all tickers I'm interested in because you'll see they have huge volume compared to the past. And that's a huge indicator for me. And they're volatile. I mean, look at from 220 to 380. I mean, it's big range. I need big range. This stock... Uh, I don't see it doing anything. It's on my radar. I was hoping today that it would spike up to the 380s so I could short some, but it did not. And so I'm just going to keep it on radar just in case Monday we get a big spike. But I don't, I'm not too interested in it and not excited. CHNR, same thing. Look at this. It spiked up huge, crapped out. Again, look at the notice, big volume compared to previous days. The only thing I'm interested in is a potential short. So if this stock was to, um, there's someone outside my house. Sorry, if this, this stock was to spike up huge, let's go to the intraday. Spike up to like this 370 level, I may take a short. It's a high possibility that will happen. And CLWT. This one, I have it on radar. I have no plan whatsoever unless it spiked huge to this level. Again, look at the volume. That's why I'm interested in it. I don't give a sh I don't care anything about this. Look at there's no volume. But right now there's no play for me, but it is on my radar. I will be watching it um, for a potential short. Could be a long play, but it's not for me personally. I know some people who actually actually I know one of the followers, one of my followers who has been following me for a while since I started doing this. A good I consider him a friend now. He's cool. He sent me a DM. He made some good money on this stock. It is his pattern. He likes this pattern where it gaps up and he shorts it. And he made some good money. I mean, right at the open, he was right. He shorted it and it dropped from, from 580s down straight to 5 bucks. So that's a big drop. So when that happens, I mean, he, he's making bank. And he sent me a message right away and I was so excited for him. But... I hope that shows that everyone trades differently. You find out what you're comfortable with and you trade that. Don't worry about what other people are doing. There's tons of strategies. What really matters is can you stick to your plan? That's what matters. Okay, so this stock I was interested. I just missed it. Um, you see here on this day, let's just concentrate on this. Yesterday, it was holding below $8, $7.90. And it's an earnings winner. Earnings winners, I do like. 
because that's good news. It's great positive news, and people like earnings winners. And this had a good spike, had big volume, and there's no real overhead resistance until eight, nine, or nine bucks. So there's plenty of room. And since it couldn't break this level, I was interested today. If it broke 790, I was gonna buy. At the open, I completely missed it. I, I was literally not even watching the stock. It's like, I know I put I put alerts on all my stocks, but I forgot to put an alert on this one, and that's a shame on me. Because if so, I would have bought some right here in the 790s, sell some in the 830s, it would have been a good trade. And then a good dip, I was right here at eight, but I missed that too. And after I missed that one, I was done because after this double top, I was not excited about it anymore. You got to remember when things, when the chart starts to develop, it starts to develop new patterns. And if I'm not comfortable with that new pattern, I'm not going to trade it. And when it dipped down here, it would have been a good dip buy, you know, once it reclaimed the $8 mark. But it only dipped, it went up to $8.27. So each dip is getting lower. And now we are getting higher higher lows, but we're also getting lower highs. So I'm indecisive on this. And because I'm indecisive, I don't have a play for it. And so because of that, I'm going to miss it. Whatever it does tomorrow, I hope it spikes huge and just, I hope it breaks through nine, just goes. Cause then, you know, it might reset up, but I'm just keeping it on radar because it may set up later. TPIV just is on my radar just in case it sets up because it has huge volume. But right now, I don't see a chart or a pattern that I'd like to play. <clears throat> JAGX, another one. You know what I've just noticed? The volume isn't really that great. Um, yeah, it's really not. I have it on radar, but the volume's... Not that great, so probably not be interested in this. So there you have it, guys. I hope that helps. How did I find these? So I'll show you. Finviz.com. I like this website. It's free. What I do is create a free account, and you can pull up your big percent gainers. I like anything over a million volume on the day, and 10 million, or I'm sorry, 10% or more on the uh, up 10% or more. And then when you hover over the ticker, it shows you a little box of the graph. And you can immediately tell if you're interested, if you're not. And if you click on it, you can pull up and see the float. I hate the pop-up, so. The float, which is very important because low float means it can move. It can move, actually. It can, it can move pretty quickly. Both ways, though, up and down. The bigger the float, it's the more volume it's going to need to really move. Okay, just keep that in mind. And then it shows you news, if there is news. I really don't care about news that much. If it is an earnings winner, I will be excited. Um, other than that, I don't really care. But I hope, this guy, I hope this helps everyone out. Be sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions. And, uh, and I would like you to put one comment saying one thing that you know, you really, that has really helped you this past week in trading. And maybe it can help me, maybe it can help someone else. Just one tip that you found that has really helped you during your trading journey, because we are all on this journey to get, be, to become a better trader. So you guys take care. Appreciate you watching. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. You guys take care.